Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and I talk a lot about Salesforce. Today, we're gonna to be going over the exam guide for the Salesforce Certified Business Analyst. So for the certification, what you should know and what you shouldn't know. And we'll probably throw in a few nuggets of hints that I have found while studying for this exam, not giving any answers, but saying, hey, this is really important to study. So about the business analyst credential. So this one was not focused on actually doing stuff within Salesforce. Rather, it was focused on being a business analyst with some context around Salesforce and what to do with Salesforce. So like if I was on a question, it would be testing me on some piece of business analysis functionality, but then it would say, oh, you are working on the sales cloud. It wasn't like too important to the actual question, but it just gave some context to the exam around the story of each question. So for the business analyst certification, I found this one really useful. This one is one of the longer certifications that Salesforce has, and it helped me to understand how to ask better questions when I was in some type of business analyst role. And it also helped me understand how to communicate better, how to ask better questions, what types of things we're wanting to gain from asking these questions. So I felt like it was very useful in my day to day, but it wasn't necessarily useful to get a job, if that makes sense. Whereas like the admin certification is very much like, hey, you get the admin certification and it will help you get a job because people want certified admins. But this one was not in that path, but it helped you to understand how to be better at your job. So hopefully that makes sense. Audience description. So it says that you should have two years of business analyst experience and two years of Salesforce platform experience. I did not have two years of business analyst experience. I have personally never been a business analyst as my role. It has had some crossover with some of my other roles, but don't let this two years of business analyst experience deter you from taking the certification. And I did have two years of Salesforce platform experience, but again, it was more of a thing of context. So you don't need to have that either to be able to take this certification. It wasn't a necessary thing about, hey, if you tweak this one and this one, as far as like permissions go, what's gonna happen? Whereas like most other like admin certifications are gonna be like that. Here are some of the knowledge, the skills and the abilities. So being able to know the implementation lifecycle, some of the skills are mapping business processes, abilities, how do you communicate with different stakeholders. So going back to this candidate outline, a candidate who has this certification or who has a similar role as to what this certification is filling, they may need help negotiating stakeholders, designing solutions, setting up business priorities, that kind of thing. They are not expected to know a whole list of things, so change management. It is helpful for some context. You don't need to know like the ins and outs of it, but you should know what some things are called and what are some of the use cases for them. Managing a project. I mean, yes and no. Building in a return on ROI, developing custom code, definitely not. Designing a technical solution, definitely not. And you guys can read through this. So here are some of the typical job titles of a business analyst, which I think is a very useful thing that they've added to certifications to help you understand, hey, if I have the certification, I'm looking for a new job. What am I going to be applying for? All right, let's move on to about the exam. So this one has 60 multiple choice questions and up to five non-scored questions. It's been about 50-50 for me on if I've had those five non-scored questions or not. These ones are going to be baked within the exam, so you don't know which ones are going to be scored, which ones are not going to be scored. But this just allows Salesforce to test out possible upcoming questions on the exam. You have 105 minutes, so that's about an hour and 45 minutes. Passing score of 72%, so that's probably like 44 questions, 43 questions, roughly a registration fee. Now this is going to vary depending on your location and depending on your language that you're taking this exam in. For the US, it's $200 and then a retake of $100. You can do this online at home or you can do this at a testing center. Personally, I don't have a testing center nearby, but that is an option for you if that is a better thing for you to do and that's more comfortable for you. No hard copy or online materials. 
can be used or referenced. They have a camera on you and your browser is going to be locked down. There are no prerequisites, which is different because they used to have the admin, but now they don't. And they just want you to understand that you may be getting questions on Salesforce Classic or Lightning Experience. It's not too applicable to this exam, but they just add it for everything. One thing I will say about the exam is that it was a choose one out of three. So it was really easy to either one, pick out the right answer once you understand the material, or two, you can automatically get rid of one of the answers. So it's a 50-50 chance on if you can pick the right answer if you are just guessing and you know a little bit about the question. Another thing is that you can take notes on the exam. So this is not physical notes, but it is like notes on the side. So if we had this about the exam, that's the question. And then we have these bullet points pretending these are the answers. Over here, there'd be like a long bar and then you'd have a box for notes. You can take notes and you can go back and forth between questions. And these notes will stay on your screen until you go from one question to the other. So they'll stay with you throughout the whole exam. But once you finish the exam, your notes will disappear. So you cannot take notes with you after you have hit submit. I like this for a variety of reasons. And there's two different strategies that I use when having this note section. The first one is a brain dump. So let's say you are cramming right before this exam. I'm not a huge fan of this one, but it can be useful. And you're understanding different acronyms and what they stand for. So once you get into the exam, you can just brain dump in that note section. So then you don't forget what you had just crammed. Another strategy that I use quite often is that a question will spark something in my mind that I remember learning. And I don't want to forget that. So I will put that in the note section. So then I can take those notes on to other questions and that might become useful on later on questions and vice versa. So like if I'm on question 30 and I write down some notes and I remember, oh, hey, I remember hearing something about this, reading something about this on question 12, you can go back and forth with your notes to be able to help you answer those questions correctly. So those are super useful. Recommended training resources. Uh, you've got the Trail Mix, you've got the module, there's Trailhead Academy. I personally do not recommend using Trailhead Academy unless your employer is paying for it. This one, it is very, very expensive, multiple thousands of dollars. And there's a lot better resources online from what I've seen from taking them or doing like the free certification days. I will plug right now that we have resources on Salesforce Upskill, Udemy Business soon, and LinkedIn Learning. So you can get our business analyst course on those three places. So now let's jump into the exam outline. So customer discovery at 17%. So discovery is a stage in delivering a project where you are working with your stakeholders, you are working to understand what kind of solution the customer wants from your company. Now, a lot of this will be from the consultant point of view on the exam and also in our resources that we've created. It's mostly from the consultant point of view. So you are a business analyst on a consulting team and you have a team of developers and admins and testers and whatnot. And so you are working uh, with your customer to understand what they want. So understanding what their goals are and the, the why behind their goals so you can deliver projects getting a clearer scope. The scope should be somewhat defined in an SOW, but then you should get a little bit more clear on what the project is. So scope being what's inside of bounds and what's outside of bounds. You also want to understand where they are with their Salesforce implementation right now, what their goal is for going and getting where they want to get to, and then understanding the middle part of how do you get from current state to future state. So let's say our client had just bought Salesforce and they're wanting to implement Service Cloud. So you ask, hey, what do you want to see out of Service Cloud? You want to have a way for customers to submit a case online and that be hooked up to Salesforce. You want to have an online knowledge base. So asking those questions, you can get that future state and start to understand how to get there. So that's going to be at 17%. It is a somewhat big chunk. It is a somewhat big chunk of the exam. Next is going to be collaboration with stakeholders. So stakeholders can be a confusing term if you are newer to it. 
A stakeholder is anyone that has a stake within the project. So anyone who touches a particular function of the business, who touches the product that you're building out, anyone who has that. There are different types of stakeholders and you'll need to communicate with them differently based upon their stakeholderness and what their job is within being a stakeholder. So you may have stakeholders that are executives. You may have stakeholders that are end customers. You may have stakeholders that are end users, or you may have your key stakeholders. Each of these different people are going to need to be communicated in different ways, and you also need to get different requirements from them. So whereas like uh, if we go back to the service example, you may have the VP of customer service. They don't really need to be communicated too often, except for maybe big updates. Hey, we're going live on this day. Hey, we're finishing up discovery on this day. We are user acceptance testing on this day. They don't really need to know too much. You may have the end users that you need to help have help test things. You may have a service manager and they're going to be your main communication stakeholder as far as getting all of the requirements and being the go-between between the company and the technical team of consultants. So there's different ways that you can communicate with stakeholders and the different needs and the most effective ways to communicate with stakeholders on the exam. Now, this one also goes across multiple sections. And a lot of this, it was really difficult to tell in some circumstances what the question was getting after as far as sections on the exam. So it's really helpful to know this one, especially because it's the biggest section on the exam. Next is going to be business process mapping at 12%. A lot of this on the exam was just understanding the different business processes and which scenarios lined up to which processes. So like we talked about previously, understanding current state, future state, and then the in-between is called the gap. So understanding what a gap analysis is, understanding the like a value stream map or journey mapping or the stakeholder wheel or understanding any of those maps that you might do to help gather requirements to help your developers go back to when they're developing the solution. This one was very vocabulary heavy. So once you understood what the map was, you understood what the scenarios were around it and when you'd want to use it, this section was fairly easy. Next is going to be requirements. So requirements are going to be the things that you need to get from your customer and what they want. So you should understand the difference between scope, requirements, user stories. So the scope is what's inside and what's outside of bounds for the project. Requirements are going to be the things that your customer wants. And then user stories are going to be what you transform your requirements into to give to your development team. So in this section, you are understanding how to engage different stakeholders, what elicitation techniques you should use to gather those requirements, what are the different ways that you can gather requirements and how do you store your requirements. All right, next is going to be user stories at 18%. User stories was also a fairly easy section on the exam once you understood the basic functionalities of the user stories or the basic structure of the user stories is what I should say. And so once you understand how to take those raw requirements and then put them into user stories, which Chat GPT can be somewhat helpful for this as far as like, hey, can you put this into a rough user story, this requirement? And you'll probably have to do some changing of it, but it can be helpful. It's good to know how to do user stories by hand for the exam, but in practice, you may want to use that depending on the security of your client or customer. And then finally, you have development support and user acceptance testing. So just understand how to deliver the project to make sure the solution meets the requirement, which is mostly going to be done through user acceptance testing. So having the customer go through and make sure that all of their requirements have been met that were within the scope of the project. That's going to be the exam outline. A few things, you should not give out any answers for the exam and make sure that you're not receiving any answers for the exam. If you do so, you may lose your certifications. You may be barred from taking any future certifications, what have you, all those fun things. Now, sometimes they do have maintenance for the credentials of the certification. I would just check on the Trailhead website to make sure that all your credentials are up to date. There are a couple links and I'll try and link this uh, exam guide in the comments so you can go and look for those on your own. 
But this is going to be the exam guide. I hope that this was helpful for walking through this for you to be able to understand a little bit more about the Salesforce Business Analyst exam. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments down below. We do have resources on Salesforce Upskill, LinkedIn Learning, and on Udemy Business. So some of these may be free to you to use. Check with your local libraries, check with your employers or any current or future uh, universities or colleges to see if you have access to those. But thank you so much and I'll catch you guys in the next one.